Hey, fantasy fans, it's Dan here with Tree Beer Book Reviews. As you can see, I am joined by Travis Baldry, author of Legends and Lattes. Um, Travis is also a very well-known audiobook narrator. And uh, Travis, you're also, um, you know, reading your background, you're a former game designer. You're a bit of a, a bit of a polymath. Yeah, I've had a few different jobs, that's for sure. <laughs> so, Travis, if you would maybe just, you know, quick tell us about yourself, and then we'll, uh, I, I said, um, I guess for a quick intro for Legends and Lattes, uh, I read Legends and Lattes this month, and uh, we opened up, I opened up a buddy read on my YouTube channel uh, to buddy read Legends and Lattes. The, the buddy read's still going on, so if you want to get on that, uh, join my Discord, and, you know, I'm everyone's chatting about Legends and Lattes. We're all having a good time and having a lot of fun. So, um, and we got some questions for Travis from the Discord. So, yeah, so Travis, I'll, I'll uh, lend it over to you now. Uh, so, obviously, I'm Travis. I, as you, as you mentioned, I'm a full-time audiobook narrator. I've been full-time doing that for a couple years now. Um, for 20, I don't know how, I don't know how many over 20 years before that, and I actually don't want to think about the number. I was a video game developer. Um, I coned and ran uh, Runic games and Double Damage games, uh, made cool. Torchlight, Fate, Rebel Galaxy. So that was my theoretical real, real career. Mm -hmm. um at some point i started doing audiobooks on the side uh mm -hmm. and because i had the equipment for game development for doing vo and my kids did not need me to read to them anymore <laughs> and i liked it and i kept doing it on the side and i did um i became most well known for will white's cradle series yeah. and that kind of probably was the the tinder that was needed to start the fire that eventually resulted in enough books that i was like i can yeah. just do this and yeah, yeah. i really like it so i'm just going to switch jobs so that's what i did um and uh I, then i guess as far as legends and lattes go i was uh i've tried to do national novel writing month any number of times over the mm. past again probably a couple of decades and i've never actually finished one and this is the first one that i finished so yeah, super um, impressive that you could like you smash this book out in a month like uh i i, I hope I, that I it's keep... short it hopes well, that it's yeah, short and it's, simple it's it, it is short but it's it's it feels like there's so much there and that there's such a deeper world like um because i read it i read it super fast i think i read it in two sittings and then i texted my mother-in-law because my mother-in-law is starting to get into fantasy too I was like, you need to read this book. And so she, I told her that morning and she texted me at like nine o'clock at night. She's like, I read it. It's amazing. I absolutely loved it. I'm so, so glad you liked it. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. I've been telling a lot of people, everyone, I, <laughs> everyone I've been, I've been walking around with this book in my pocket. I'm like, have you heard about Legends of Latte? You should be, you should be reading this book. So, because I actually originally, originally read it on Kindle Unlimited. Yeah. And um, I was like, oh, I just loved it so much that I needed to, to buy a physical copy. So I did. And uh, that was one thing I want to ask, too, like the cover art. Um, how involved were you with, with Carson to get the cover art uh, going? Um, so I actually wrote all this up, too. So afterwards, I can point you to the Medium post where I went through the okay. entire production process for this. But um, it went through basically four stages. I had a write-up of what I wanted, which was yep. remarkably close to what ended up there yeah um and went from you know a three sketch initial concept phase to you know a color rough to a semi-final and to a final you know and little feedbacks and adjust adjustments along the way but that's kind of a process i've been through a lot in the past for mm -hmm. game dev and the concepting okay, yeah. and art production process so it doesn't it wasn't weird for me it was just like mm -hmm. old oh this is just it felt kind of a little old hat as, <laughs> as far as something <laughs> yeah. that i've done um, but it was really nice, and I was just so happy with how it came out. Um, yeah, you did a fantastic job. For me, that's that's like the characters. So I'm just 100%. like, oh, good. This is a great. This is what the characters look like. Fabulous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, um, it, it does a lot for headcanon for a lot of readers. Um, it does. And I, uh, the one thing I do appreciate is uh, we get Thimble on the back too. I know, got him that, stuck in. Yeah, I love that. Like, I I just noticed it the other day. I was like, oh, is that Thimble? It is. So that was it is. Uh, it is. He's the great. secret bonus if you get the paperback. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah uh, it's it's a fantastic cover. And that was actually I did have a question. So I, I I will ask you a different question after this one. But I did have a question from my Discord actually about the uh, about your book cover. Because um, you know, we saw that you're you signed up with Tor UK for yes. for your um, for for Legends and Lattes. So mm -hmm. will that change the publication at all, or like are they sticking with the same cover? Or are they going to be doing their own cover? 
so it'll be up to every individual territory. Okay. Um, um, and I can't talk about any of the other territories yet, which okay. include the U.S. Um, so Tor UK is going to publish it in the U.K. Yeah. And then everything else outside of the U.K. for them is foreign rights. Okay. So it's not Tor UK specifically publishing it in the U.S. because of the way this stuff works. I know who's publishing it, but I'm I'm not going to say yet because they haven't like officially said it's okay to say. Okay. I'm happy okay. about it. But um, every individual territory has their own decision making process on covers. Yeah. I my my what I think is going to happen in the U.K. is that it will probably be a new cover, and it okay. will probably have the old cover. I think I think I've convinced them to conclude the old cover as like an interior illustration okay. like the first page so that you can still get like the headcanon image of the gotcha. characters yeah yeah but uk covers are generally a lot more like symbolic and like yeah. they're not they're less illustrative for sure overall. yeah they're so, like, like stylistically they're they just they, they want them to like sit on a shelf or something and nobody wants nobody will look at you funny if you read it on the tube i don't know yeah but, yeah like i lived in i lived in england for a couple of years and i noticed that like walking around um like look at the bookstores there and there's nothing that just like jumped off the shelf. Like a good example is like Brandon Sanderson's covers. Like his American covers are great. UK covers boring. Like so just so different. They, so yeah. different. But then it's weird um, that then they'll they'll turn around and then they'll come up with a cover like um for uh, uh for Jay Kristoff's like vampire new his new vampire book that came out and it's amazing. So it's it's like hit or miss. So I, I yeah, hope... it's hard to say. I, you know, it's I think it's gonna be different. Um yeah. I I mean and but I think we will probably have the same color cover in the U.S. The typography okay. may be different. Something may change. But I yeah. think we will probably have the same cover in the U.S. Can't say for certain. Okay. It's certainly my vote. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, will they run any of the cover art by you? Or is it just like, this is what we're doing? Like, I mean, uh, the way they do it, I think, is, is I have, like, um, I'm involved. Yeah, but okay. But I don't have, like, final approvals. No, I like, veto like, power. negotiate for that. But yeah. honestly, I got to launch the book and put it out there with the cover I wanted. So it's almost like I get to take a couple swings at it. So if UK does something different and it's cool, yeah. I mean, okay. Yeah. Especially if they if they are going to include the art in the inside. Because that's what I care about the most, is yeah. that you can open the book and see it one way or another. Because I is think it's there, just cool to see the characters. Do you know if Carson has prints for, like, this artwork? Uh, he doesn't because I have the full commercial rights. Oh, you so, do? Okay. So, which is because I got it. I paid for full commercial rights so that I yeah. can make a poster or whatever. I just haven't done that because, okay. again, I really was not, I didn't, <laughs> wasn't really coming into this with any expectations. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. um, the, the merch side <laughs> didn't of things expect to become a best-selling author off the, off um, the go, right? <laughs> did not, did not expect any of that. Um, I, I could, and Yesterday, I was looking at my website. I have an audiobook narration website, and it has like a little link for a book. And I'm like, I got the blurb. I managed to yeah. just cram that in there. And now I'm thinking, my, I don't even really need an audiobook narration website. Nobody comes to me through there. <laughs> you, Nobody cares. You're gonna, they just, you're going to need a merch site. I think, but now too, I need Travis. to switch it. It, it. I guess it ought to be more of a book website. It's all very confusing. Like, because I'm, I'm sure people are dying for a Legends of Latte shirt. Like, just even like the, you know, the logo of the shop, like with the shield well, and, the, and the... A friend of mine, Samantha Petri, made this really cool art of Thimble that, uh, I don't know if you've seen it. I've got it no. on a mug. It's adorable. It's okay, amazing. It's like it. chibi Thimble. And um, I got it on like some Zazzle mugs and they're amazing. And so I've just been giving, been giving people links to the Zazzle mug. I don't get anything for it. I don't want anything for it. Yeah, Honestly, yeah. I want samantha to get something for it but oh. you can still order the same thing with the same artwork that's cool. and people have been ordering it and then they'll take a picture of it and they're like oh i got my thimble mug <laughs> you'll have to maybe send me a link in email and i can i can look it up and maybe I will. i'll put it in the discord because i know i will because it's adorable yeah like everyone loves thimble like that's been like the everyone's been like heart thimble we love thimble he's so i'm writing it and i was thinking like okay we'll put in the rat man everybody else is pretty humanoid right yeah pretty straight up and like nope i added a rat man who is a baker this is the part where all of the credibility goes away <laughs> and it like just breaks it for people but, but it's the opposite it didn't feel like it didn't feel out of place and like i read like my favorite series and like favorite authors like terry pratchett and like Discworld. And this felt very like Discworldly, and in a sense, like it's this high fantasy world. But like, like and you, you say perfectly in the book, high fantasy with low stakes. And you know, like Terry Pratchett does this very similar, where he throws you into this fantasy world. He doesn't have to explain golems and dwarfs and like you know yeah, gnomes to people. It, yeah, they're just around. And 
and this there's is a certain it, amount of anachronism you know to it you know yeah and he's so speaking of terry i mean that's kind of my goal for this like ongoing stories is to do mm. what terry does where you can just tell different kinds of stories in the same yeah. place and you can yeah. do you can talk about whatever the heck you want yeah ex well that's the thing like is terry was really big on themes right and like you know i really love the themes in your book too about you know you know you know changing your stars in a sense like you know starting something new try like uh, leaving your past behind you and uh you know finding fortune somewhere else so i really like and that that found family thing too so and it's just it's really it's like wrapped up in this cozy warm bundle that it's one of those series that i know like it's one of those books i know i'm gonna like reread because <laughs> and it's such a nice like quick read that i could read it in an afternoon and get that same feeling so i guess what well, i'm gonna get into like a, a more silly question here but uh it's what i typically like ask and it's a uh, cake or pie cake or pie it depends so much on the cake or the pie. That's why it's this a tough question. a very complicated question. <laughs> it's a tough question. If it's, I'm a big fan of key lime. Mm. On the cake side, it's usually, you know, like, I really like, like, the torts, like, flourless chocolate okay, yeah, tort yeah. kind of stuff. Like and a so, kind of... This is really tough. It's a toughie, right? This is remarkably difficult. I, I asked this question to Brandon Sanderson, and he couldn't... He, he had a tough time. It's tough. I am going to say pie. Yeah, I'm team pie. Because you can make a pie almost into a cake. Yeah, yeah. You can get really close. You can get a very cake-like pie, mm -hmm. like a ch chocolate chess pie. We're getting yeah. to the borderline of cake here. Yeah, yeah. So you're, I'm going to say I kind of cover my bases by choosing pie. <laughs> I'm going to go middle road. Yeah, I get I get so many options with that. If I pick a cake, i got to pick one kind of cake. Yeah. You know, but if I pick a pie... Uh, there's a lot more options there. I find with cake, I, I'm always disappointed when I get cake sometimes, but with pie, I don't think I've ever had a disappointing pie. I have this, there's this place downtown here that makes a margarita pie. Ooh. It's like a, so it's got that kind of limey, <laughs> yeah, yeah. sort of thing going. It's, it's really good. Okay, That's I think really that good. tipped you over. I'm, I'm saying pie. <laughs> you say pie, yeah. <laughs> well, we just had Easter, obviously, and uh, my, my mother-in-law brought these like little, um, I guess they're like little pecan, like, pie tarts and oh, they were so good. yeah they were yeah like these, oh, good time. i'm originally from texas and there were fresh pecans because there's pecan trees everywhere so it oh was yeah yeah pie for days um honestly those are too sweet for me now because yeah i don't know how it's like literally just a solid there's just enough water to turn that sugar into jelly oh underneath. yeah i know that's why i have a gold tooth because <laughs> <laughs> it's just like they, like they, uh, they do door they do horrible and i'm british like i'm english by like my background so my teeth aren't uh, my teeth aren't up to it so but uh yeah no thanks for that yeah cake versus pie it's a tough one um it is tough so i i'll get to some questions from uh from like people in the discord now because they had some pretty good ones so uh actually and you mentioned this earlier so this one's from kaiser corp um so i'm he's curious to know about you know some of the other standalones that you're thinking about writing and uh mm -hmm. like are they going to be more like slice of life focused or kind of single character because I know like we were discussing some of the characters we liked. I really would love to see like a Hemington book um, or um, I'm trying, I, the name slipping my mind that the gnome who was in Durius. Yep. Durius. Yes. Durius. Oh, he was really so interesting. I expect him to show up in most things okay. one way or another. Um, so the next book has, I, I know what it is. I've got a bunch of notes and I'm about to start outlining it. It's cool. um, it's got different mains it's set yep. in the same city. Um, it's got a little more plot to it. It's a little less slice of life because it's, mm. it's like, uh, it's almost a cozy mystery Okay, where you get into like the university a lot more. Oh, cool. So you learn more about magic and you know, learn more about, you know, it, I mentioned like arcane reciprocity is like a concept, that they, okay. but they just use it to talk about like yeah, the yeah. blowback and the potential, but you learn about it like more concretely, like what is it and how does it limit magic? And that's part cool. of the story. Um, I mean, I don't, I, I'm going to try not to over talk about it because I'll talk myself out of doing it. Okay. Um, but I don't, we don't want that. <laughs> it's got, it's got new characters that I like. Some old faces will show up, cool. um, but it's a different kind of story. Yeah. Yeah. Which I think is like, would be good because, you know, this, this world is so interesting. And like the thing when you're reading it, like it felt like a real fleshed out world and you didn't need to like the world, it didn't feel like a lot of world building was needed because you, you know, you had these characters or these, these races of characters that 
you know, most people recognize like an or, yeah, or it like trades on like, a lot of familiarity. I mean, there's yeah. a lot of like, you know, there's a lot of kind of like classic fan with a little bit of a twist to it, you know, mm. and it's all presented a little bit more modern than it usually is. Yeah. You know, their sensibilities are a little bit more modern. Their language is a little more modern. And again, there's those yeah. bits of anachronism that are coming in. But um, so, I mean, what I want to do with the next book was make sure that it wasn't like I'm just going to write books about food and coffee shops forever because yeah, yeah. I, I just wanted to make sure I don't like immediately just do the same thing again yeah like write yourself um, into a corner in a sense yeah because I, I i want the core thing is i want to have good characters that i like to be around i want mm -hmm. to feel better after the story than when i started yep. and i want it to have something that it wants to talk about about being people mm -hmm. and human and you know a common relatable thing that people that everybody can okay i yeah. get that Everybody can remember that, you know, can can relate to having a crappy job or yeah. being in a new city where they don't know people That's or right. just trying to find your people and having a tough time doing it and being surprised when it happens. And those are things that you can like relate to pretty straightforwardly. Yeah. Um, I think Terry Pratchett did that a lot, but he did it a lot with like bigger like societal concepts. Big time. Yeah. Like, yeah the post office like... or the movies or government or, yeah. you know, yeah. religion or whatever. And I'm, I'm, I think, aimed like a little smaller. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But. Well, that's the thing, like, it's, you know, with, like, with characters like Viv, like, she's an orc, and you, you wouldn't think, like, you could relate to an orc, but you can relate to an orc making a coffee shop and just, you know, going through, like, what it takes to start a business and, you know, the trials she faces there, and they're not, like, the type of trials she faced in her previous life as a mercenary, and just seeing her overcome these, like, small battles to her, but they were in the, in the grand scheme of, like, the restaurant. It, it was, they're big, and uh, yeah. I just, I really loved it, and, um, it the was... nice thing about fantasy races is that you can take like a feeling that you have that kind of like transfers on them because everybody has can have the feeling like I don't belong here. I feel like an mm -hmm. alien in this place. I don't I don't feel like I know. I feel like people are expecting things from me that I'm not prepared to yeah. give. And that's like a really relatable thing. And you yeah. can kind of ball it up in these fantasy archetypes. Yeah, no, it was, it's 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 really fascinating how you, you know, you you got that down into like such into 300 pages like it's pretty impressive and like how much i can't think it was too short <laughs> no no i i think it was i i would say it's perfect like where the length where because if it went too much when he, like too much long you would have stretched out the ending and if it was like too short yeah. you wouldn't have had the resolution you had and that's where i that's where i ended up but i felt like oh man this is just barely not a novella you know and it was like i felt like i kept trying to think because there's something else i should put in here and then i just kept not thinking of what I would put in there, or if mm -hmm. I did, it felt like, well, I'm belaboring something now, or yeah, I'm bringing up something that like takes us off somewhere else, or I don't know. Yeah, no, I, I really liked, it. and I did like the epilogue too, where you know you leave it open, you like you know you finish it there, but then there's still that like you know th there's just so much you you know you just you have this feeling that you're gonna see these characters again, which I really you know I really like. It just felt like open and that. Um, you know, we're gonna explore these characters like even more. And like and that was like one of the things I kept asking the discounts, like, oh, we hope Viv like franchises. <laughs> that was one thing I thought about. I was like, man, if I was gonna do a sequel, what would I do? You know, you have yeah. the Starbucks Tully situation. What do you you know, somebody opens a competing like actual gnomish coffee shop run by gnomes and kitty corner, you know. I yeah. <laughs> well, but then I kept thinking, I kind of just want her to be able to chill. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, for sure. Bask in her in her success. I was gonna ask if you've uh, had any influence from like Warcraft at all, because it very it felt very Warcraftian, like especially with the gnomes and like their tinkering and uh, and I know I think you're it's like, hard you're... not to. I think there's yeah. a lot of like, it's I mean it's like a big melange of like Forgotten Realms and Warcraft, mm. and it's just I mean a lot of just kind of popular fantasy. Yeah. Um. Uh. Mostly, I think just because I wasn't. I didn't want to world build something that people couldn't immediately recognize. I wanted you to immediately get past that. Like, yeah. what is this world? Who are these people? What is this race like? I didn't yeah. want you to really be concerned with that. I wanted to get straight to the main concern of like, how how do I relate to these people and what are they doing? Do you think um, that comes from your experience as like an audiobook narrator, like having to explain, like, you know, when you're reading someone yeah. else, like, it you does. know, trying to explain this, like, I have no idea what the it hell does. they're talking about. Like, It does. I'm... I've become a really big fan of kind of like this really light touch world building. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, I've read a bunch of Will White stuff. Will does that really well. 
Mm. He has a great, he's an incredible job of just like sketching in this world without belaboring it. Yeah. And, you know, when you're reading a book to yourself, if you get to the world buildy parts and you don't like them, you just skim. Oh, yeah. But I, I don't skim. I, I read it all out loud. Yeah. And I'm, I have I'm to make skim. sure it lands. And, you know, if I, if I'm, I'm just not a big fan of big thudding world building because I don't retain yeah. it. I'm mostly it's, attached to characters. Yeah, I'm. I'm always. I've always been a character-driven reader myself too, and that's why I probably latched onto your book so hard. And uh, I guess, like, is that where, like, with your when you talk about your magic system too, like, you're going to be probably more like a softer magic system than rather like a harder magic system. I think in my mind, I have some very specific things about it. I'm not going to yeah. play super fast and loose because yeah, it's going to be used for it's going to be used for investigation in this book. Yeah. So it has to have that's, some established rules. Cool. Otherwise, it's silly. You can just solve every problem with magic. Yeah, but I but I don't want to, but I don't want to go on about it. Mm -hmm. So I just kind of want to give you what you have to know. Because I, I love the magic you used in this book, where it felt it had like elements of hardness and softness, and uh, like with Hemington, I really liked. I'm not going to spoil how the magic comes in, but I really liked um, how it was used and uh, had like a really practical application. And it yeah. was like a one and done kind of thing. Like it's not just a continuous type of like magic, which I really liked that you that you included in the book and it felt really natural. Yeah. And in, in the general conceit is that the magic is not, it can't be so crazy. It, it always has to have consequence because otherwise it yes. solves all the problems. Yes. And yeah. I don't really want a book about magic solving all the problems or people just using magic for everything. Mm -hmm. It's just another tool people use to get around in the world that has its yeah. drawbacks and yeah. people study it. And it's, you know, so they're a little scientific about it, but yeah. Well, and that's what we saw, like, in the book, too. Like, it wasn't magic that solved its problems, right? It was, you know, people and, like, uh, yeah. the people in her life. And, yeah, it was, and, like, also her clientele, right? So um, let's get to another question here from the Discord. So I guess, you know, why coffee? Like, what, uh, so this was, this one's from Kiki. So, like, what was the idea for the coffee shop and, like, the, all these desserts? Um, probably some of it is just pining for being able to go to a coffee shop. <laughs> Because when I was writing this, I mean, oh, it's the depth COVID, of COVID right? and, you know, yeah. the idea of going to a coffee shop where mm -hmm. nobody's wearing a mask and just sitting inside and having a nice day is total escapist fantasy for me at that point. Yeah. So yeah, it yeah. sounds great. Um, I had a coffee shop that I used to frequent for years when I lived in Seattle uh, called El Diablo. And it was mm -hmm. kind of like, it was just this place that we always went. We yeah. knew the people, you know, and it was... I, I just like coffee shops. I like the way they smell. I like being there. Yeah. I like all the weird archetypes of people that show up, like the students that don't play for the Wi-Fi and the, <laughs> yeah. uh, the musicians from the college down the street who aren't actually that great, but are going to be there doing their thing. Yeah. And, uh, you know, the, the cat that is always seems to be around. <laughs> Lingering, yeah. <laughs> you know, um, and so I, I, I like that. I've got a lot of affection for that. Mm. Um, it's... As far as why coffee shop for Viv, I just wanted to do something that was the opposite of what, uh, something mundane that was yeah. enjoyable that Viv could do, and what yeah. sounded nice to do, like as a job. What 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 yeah. what can I what what would make me feel good to think about building a business doing that? You know, I could have done a bookstore, I suppose. That would have been the yeah, that would have been cool too. Out. That that would have been interesting. But I think I don't know. Well, coffee is one of those things that you know it is you know you can get a coffee anywhere you go in the world right and uh yeah um it's like a very relatable thing and you know even if it's a like coffee or tea right like it's, it's it's something that kind of connects people right yeah and uh like i know in, in canada we have like a, a big brand here like tim hortons i mean it's not tim hortons great. yeah yeah it's not the greatest coffee but i mean like it's it's a cup of mud right and you're gonna drink it and it just it just felt so relatable and uh like just it's how did you i guess how did you capture that amb ambiance because it just you know when you're reading this book like you that that felt like it must have been something hard for you to do or or was it was it natural or was it easy honestly all the food and coffee related stuff came pretty easy because yeah, yeah. I, i'm a real i'm a really like i have a really good sense memory for like smells and stuff mm. that's how i remember lots of things it's just yeah. by the way they smell so i don't know i have a good sense memory um so that stuff all felt pretty straightforward to write um and the nice, the nice, the other nice thing about coffee is that it was something that I could introduce that theoretically nobody would know about. If I made a bookstore mm -hmm. or something else, theoretically everybody would know what a bookstore was yeah. in the world. There wouldn't be that element of like, 
introducing the idea to mm -hmm. people, which makes it a little more fraught too. It makes it a little more of a worry. Like, could this yeah. even work? Yeah, yeah. So having it be in, invented helps sell that and at least have some minor amount of tension in a largely tension tensionless book. Yeah. No, I, I had I to like manufacture that. it in weird ways because I didn't want to hurt anybody during the book. For sure. No, I, I, there was one moment, there were some moments where they were drinking coffee at night. I'm like, you're going to pay for that later. You're going to be up all night. <laughs> That's <laughs> the like, fantasy. That's the <laughs> fantasy. Yeah. Because I know, I know like Italian, I have a few Italian friends and they're like, you don't drink cappuccino after 11, like 11 a.m. So. Oh, well, I've made that, I make that mistake. So my Not wife and too. I got ours. I was one of those automatic espresso makers for our 25th anniversary. Oh, wow. <laughs> and, uh, and uh, it's amazing, but yeah. you know. I, I certainly drink some afternoon, oh, which yeah. also weirdly, you know, I started sleeping slightly less after we got it, but it can't at all be related. There's no correlation. Yeah. There's no correlation whatsoever. Well, my, my wife, uh, she'd probably kill me because she's a, she'll watch this, but my wife's a bit of a coffee snob and like we, uh, we do a lot of like pour over coffee and, uh, like she, she loves her coffee and like, we like to try like different roasteries and like different, you know, Canadian like coffee companies. So uh, you know, this, like, the, I keep telling him, like, she, she's a, she's a big romance reader. So, uh, and I told him, like, there's romance in here. You should pick it up. It's really light, but it's, it's really good. And, uh, you know, it's got coffee. It's like your thing. So, but yeah, she's, she's, she's really into co co coffee and baked goods. So it's, I don't know why she hasn't read it. Cause it's, I keep reading. Maybe it's like, it has a big green person it. on the front. It does have a big green. Well, person no, she, she, she's actually a huge, like fantasy reader too. See, like just, fantasy romance. Yeah, she does like her fantasy romance. Yeah, she makes me read the odd. Like, what we do is like every quarter, we'll do like a book swap. So I'll read a romance book, and then I'll I have to I pick a fantasy or sci fi novel for her to read. So, uh, but I, I shouldn't nice. have to I shouldn't have to force her to read this one because I know she'll she'll love it. And her mom <laughs> read it too, so I know it's it's right up her alley. Um, I guess I got some. Uh, let's see, I got another one here from CD. CD had a lot of questions. CD wrote me four questions for you. So um okay so did you or do you plan to attend any conventions or tour the book at all or is it pretty much it's it's past that stage now um so i'm somehow managing to do a small book tour accidentally in washington state because oh, cool. barnes and noble started reaching out to me oh great They're like would you be interested in coming in so in june and july i've got a few that i'm going to do um oh. Uh, as far as cons, I like to go to Dragon Con, but I don't know mm -hmm. if I can this year because time-wise, I think I've got too much. <laughs> I have too many audiobooks I have to get done. Yeah. Um, but I honestly don't know what will happen after tour takes over. Mm. They tend to seem to do stuff, but I I've never been through this process. But they're yeah. going to relaunch it, and so I assume when they do, <clears throat> things will happen. But I don't know what they are. Yeah, and it will be news to me. Um, but yeah, that's where it's yeah, at right now. Because this could change your whole schedule depending on, uh, well, not too it's much, gonna be, but I mean. It's, it's going to be very interesting to see how that works. Because my audiobook schedule goes for years. So <laughs> I have, I have, it'll be, it's going to be a really interesting year or two. But your catalog of audiobooks, like I was looking, it's over, over 200 audiobooks uh, on your catalog, which is huge and impressive. There were and, about that many on the schedule. So. <laughs> Um, it's, it's, it's good. I, I don't know what's going to happen. We're just going to see what happens. <laughs> like I said, I'm just, I'm going to get on this horse and ride it. And we're just going to see what you might happens. have to get like a little like soundproof box. You can put on your head on the airplane or something like that to, uh, to record while you're, <laughs> yeah. while you're flying. Well, yeah, I mean, that's the thing. I really can't work anywhere, but here, but here. Yeah. This maybe is that is that maybe why you also maybe pine for a coffee shop? Cause like you're, you work in a booth all day and, uh, you want yeah, to be I mean, in a nice. coffee booth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, the nice thing is at least I can go to a coffee shop. But yeah. when you, uh, when, if you're in another city that's not your own, you can't just hop in any booth. I mean, because the mics yeah. are different. Even if, even if you went and got somebody else's booth and you borrowed it, mm. it wouldn't be a sound match. The equipment would all be different. You'd have gigabytes yeah. of files to upload somewhere. Yeah. Well, um, I imagine it's one of those things like you'd have to do it over multiple sittings, right? You can't, if you record a piece here, it's going to sound like, like maybe a few chapters will sound different in one place. And if you're, yeah, if you're not recording in the same space, it's, it's, it's a no-go. You got to be in the same space. So anyway, uh, we'll, we'll see how I navigate that.
<laughs> I was going to actually ask you about your audiobook like narration like um have you like turned down like like narrating books for, for some certain authors and like what would make you turn down a book if you, if you have turned down books in the past um I don't know if I've ever flatly turned down anything um it's always been more like schedule like I can't get to mm. it till here does that work for you no it doesn't because it's too mm. far out or whatever um and in a few cases where I just like this should really be read by somebody it's first person british it should be read by someone with a native british accent i'll yeah. do british accents for side characters all the time that's great but it shouldn't be read first person by somebody who isn't who doesn't speak natively with that accent uh, yeah, um, that's, that's harder for that's too, right? pretty rare I, I mean i don't mind doing it it's just not going to be as authentic and there's plenty of people who speak with an accent. Just get somebody who, yeah, yeah, because he's one of the wonderful narrators who can do this, you know. So, what is your process for that? It's like when you take a book, like do you read the book first and then like do it, like then do your second go through to do the narration, or? So I that... really lightly skim read, okay, because that's I mean that's honestly all I've got time for. But yeah. also, it's um, I don't really want to be bored by the book by the time I'm reading it out loud. Good point. Yeah. So there's a lot of things I need to know. I need to know anything that I'm going to have to figure out how to pronounce. I need to know mm -hmm. who the characters are. I need to know if they have specific accents or you discover their age or their accent way late in the book. So there's a yeah. lot of things I do that I skim through to get that information so that I don't yeah. discover I have to re-record. But it's not like I need to know how the book turns out. I don't, yeah, I don't need to enough. know every beat. Yeah, I, I'm a I'm a pretty good cold reader. That's just how I, mm. I how I work. So I've got that limited prep. And then I just get in and do the book. That's cool. Cause I, I know for me, like I, I listen to audiobooks at like a much faster speed. I usually listen to like 1.8, like 1.9 speed, depending on. And like, does that have does that have to be taken into account when you're kind of doing a narration that or do you have to read at a pace that's normal so that There's if there... nothing I can really do? I read at the pace that I think works best for the book. And okay. every book is slightly different. Like yeah. um because the language kind of dic the language and language and tone dictates the pace in a lot of ways. Um, mm. You know, I read some fantasy romance stuff, and those always take they're just longer because they the pace demands it. Um, yeah, for a lot of the adventure fiction, especially things that have banter mm. and and are funny or quippy, tend to be a lot faster books overall. And a lot of it is just, that's the way they're constructed. Mm -hmm. That sentences work a certain way. They deliver, they have kind of like a pattern to the delivery that is brisk. Yeah. It's funny when it's brisk. Humor is very seldom slow. Yeah, it's yeah, that's like, true. You got to get in there and hit the punch before they yeah. notice it, it landed, you know. Um, but I can't really accommodate like different, listening speeds what i want it to be is that you will be fine listening to it at one yeah and i think a lot of people read slower by default they're always like oh you need to really slow down um mm -hmm. but i think listening comprehension has more to do with more to do with tone and mm -hmm. understanding what's being said than it does with speed i mean it's a it's a mix yeah but... i think it also just come with practice too like listening at certain speeds that's but it's different like when i if i start a new audiobook narrate like if it's a new narrator i won't listen at that speed because i'm just not used to that type of narration yeah you're not used to them and i'm a pretty pacey reader i'm relatively mm. brisk um i'm i'm a little faster than average but like i say like if you if you heard somebody read to you in monotone at, at high speed versus somebody who reads with proper inflection at high speed the one with proper inflection is going to be more comprehensible yeah because there's all these little cues that tell you what something means. So the more adept you are at reading in a way that communicates meaning, the faster you can go. Yeah, yeah, that makes total sense. So how did it feel like narrating your own book? Like, did that was, was that the a easiest bit... thing ever. <laughs> yeah, I guess it would have been, yeah. <laughs> easiest thing ever. It was an easy two days of work. Um, because when you're reading, it's a lot of it's anticipation. You're in the sentence and you're kind of mm -hmm. scanning ahead a little bit, but you're also anticipating where the sentence is going to go. What's the author yep. going to do? Are they going to go, are they going to break left or right? What, mm -hmm. What's the inflection going to be at the end? And when you're on the same wavelength as the author, that's really easy and really fast. Yeah. And if you're not, you're constantly stumbling over it. Like the words are transposed or mm. the tone did not go where you want, or they digressed two more times than you expected or whatever. Yep. And there's just no way to be closer to that than you wrote it. And you also went through the editing process with it. So <laughs> yeah, um, 
you lived and breathed it for for so long. I, I didn't have to do any prep either, so that was nice. <laughs> yeah, good, <laughs> good point. You didn't have to ask pronunciation or anything like that. I knew how I knew what the characters were. I knew what their accents were, and I knew how everything was pronounced. <laughs> yeah, well, and I, I haven't listened to the audiobook obviously because I, I read it, but I, I'm definitely interested in, in picking it up because it's like, why not? <laughs> like, it's a, I could put it in a you know in a car ride and uh, you know enjoy it for a few hours too. Really, so I, I love I, audiobooks, but I almost never get to listen to them. So I, I imagine, yeah, it's almost like, um, like I used to, uh, you know, I used to sell beer when I was like, like in university, and just the smell of beer like put me off. <laughs> and so it's just like, you know, it's like oh, everyone's like, oh, it must be great working at a, like you know selling beer. It's like, oh, you, yeah, don't really, don't really like to, to sample my own brand kind of thing. So it's and I still really a, like them. I'm very picky about narrators. I still like them, mm. but oh, I can't listen to anything while I work. And I don't commute anywhere. So like all my opportunities for like where I would normally listen to audiobooks just sort of evaporated. <laughs> While you're doing dishes or something like that. Yeah, but I, I, I have a real problem with like picking up and putting things down. I need, I need like a committed amount of time to like retain any, any information. Mm. Um, I'm just kind of that way with everything. So if I don't have at least 30 to 40 minutes, like I'm just going to be restarting it the next time. Yeah, I hear you. Well, who, who is or who are some of your favorite audiobook narrators yourself? That's... Uh, I mean, my all time favorite is Frank Muller. He passed okay. away years ago, but he's like my all time favorite narrator. I think the Green Mile is like my gold mm. standard audiobook. Um, but there's so many good narrators out there Bonnie Turpin, uh, Julia Whalen, mm. Simon Vance, uh, Nick Padell, Lou Daniels. There's, 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 there's just a ton of really there's good a ton, yeah. <laughs> Stephen Pacey. Um, Stephen Pacey's one of my favorites, yeah. He's fabulous. So the uh, Ray Porter, there's there's lots of good narrators. Yeah, Michael. Kramer, but I am super Reddy. picky. This is a, yeah. yeah, yeah. I hear you. Yeah, what's well, it? It's a really competitive field to be in too, and you know to break out. And uh, I imagine you're you know with your book coming out, like you probably have had even more exposure just for your audio book. Like people, I, has that been the case or? I can't tell. I okay. can't tell. Maybe that's a you good know. Thing. I think I know that there's certain people who picked it up because they like me as a narrator yeah or they're aware of me as a narrator but most of the people who have come to the book have no idea who i am mm -hmm. because it's really genre out, outside of the genre stuff that i usually do i mm -hmm. like it and i specifically wanted to do it but it's yeah. not usually what people call me up and ask me to do so okay which is part of the reason i wanted to do it i wanted to do <laughs> what i wanted to do um, yeah yeah so uh and i think a few of the people who probably are used to what i do came into it and were like what what the heck is this <laughs> <laughs> where are the big battles why is no one cultivating how come there are no stats um i do a lot of game lit and a lot of progression fantasy mm -hmm. um and you know in genre fiction but i but those are kind of like specific niches where i'm particularly well known and i do a lot of work and where people usually come to me so this is mm -hmm. not those things although i guess it it does have a little bit of a progression fantasy nod in the menu yeah, um, that was where I love the menu. The menu yeah. kind of levels up over the course of the book. It's sort of yeah, like yeah. a little, a little jokey nod, but if you'd you'd miss it if you. <laughs> yeah, and that, that was like actually one of my favorite parts was the the menu, like seeing the menu like evolve and change throughout the book, and like uh, you know, well, especially with thimble stuff, and uh, it was just like it was so much like what was that like from like day one like the menu changing or is that something like you you added later or i can't remember if i was thinking about it day one but i knew i wanted to have a sense of the building of the thing to have where it felt good to have the coffee shop come together and mm. um i knew i would show a menu but i didn't know that it would be kind of articulated in that way um mm. but it's kind of like it's kind of like watching fixer upper or something you know, yeah, when yeah. you start with the with a crappy house and you're like watching them put it together, and it's just kind of very satisfying to see it come together and then be yeah. decorated at the end. There's this weird, I don't know, gamey progress bar y, you yeah. know, reward that you get from doing that. And I kind of wanted that. So, yeah. Yeah. So I, I wanted to start with something that was awful and broken down and, and a mess and not that yeah. so that it could become that and it would feel nice well you have that several times in the book like too with cal right when he's building like helping biv like build like the shop right and then obviously yeah. with the with the evolution of the um of the menu and then you know obviously there's an event that happens later in the book too um so yeah it's you it's you know third time's the charm almost in a sense and it, and it came away it came through in three different different ways 
and yeah no it's 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 i didn't even think about that till now but yeah no it's it was really well done and uh just I, it's nice to see that progress because you progress with the characters in the book and uh you yeah. know you're cheering for her all the time but then you're you're like you just want to see that where it's going to be at the end of the at the end of the day it's kind of a weird mix because it's slice of life but it is also i mean there is an arc and things happen yeah. in a progressive way so it's never it's like a slightly propulsive um slice of life it's got <laughs> i don't know it's it's a it's it's kind of a mix yeah it really is a mix and uh but that's probably what makes it great and i was gonna ask too like this book it kept showing up on twitter a lot too like did something yeah. happen with twitter and trending on twitter that like it did it did yes it really so, blew that up. was part of the reason it's um so i i had the book almost ready to go it was in like the final round of edits and i got my cover art i got my final cover art and i was like excited oh cool this looks great and so yeah. i finished up the typography and put it on there and just posted a picture on reddit it's like oh i got a cover for my book of art's really cool yeah. that's and that was it but sean and mcguire saw it and tweeted and said oh that looks neat yeah. and it she's got i i don't know what 60 or seventy thousand twitter followers and yeah. it just sort of there was a sudden like blow up on that yeah um, I, I think largely like... because the, co the cover kind of tells you what the book is oh, pretty yeah. straightforwardly well and... it was yeah it was it was the picture was almost like is it beer but then you read the title it's like oh it's, it's coffee <laughs> like yeah and you get kind of the relationship and you get the vibe yeah. and the tagline tells you what it is and it's all i mean i wanted it to communicate what the book was i wanted to yeah. unambiguously say what it was going to be and then hopefully do that thing but it way more response to that than i expected the first of the way more response than i expected yeah. so i was almost ready to go and i already have everything up on kindle desktop publishing so i just turned on the pre-order because i was like i'm gonna feel stupid if i don't yeah yeah um so i turned on the pre-order and it kind of kept going and people were wow. interested in it and it was again not what i expected because i was just i thought it would be really cool if i sold enough copies to friends and family that i could pay back my cover art yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> okay um i just i didn't it was, it was not in the plan yeah well i mean it kind of speaks to how like how cover art really makes a difference and like i guess comparing it to like discworld like discworld has really funky fancy covers but they don't really tell you the story like from the cover you you know you really have to read the discworld book and you know yours like i said like right here you know it's it's great it's, it gives really you really obvious what it is <laughs> yeah it's really obvious yeah and it, it's i felt like for like a month i'd open twitter and i would see like this cover on twitter every time i opened it and uh it, it just really keeps, made it just kept bouncing up and yeah. it's still bouncing up and it's been months sure. so um i feel like it's just like one of those things that spreads reasonably organically people tell people about it because it's easy mm -hmm. to tell somebody about it for sure and hopefully they feel nicer after they finished so it's like oh i got a cozy feeling and yeah although this is free on kindle unlimited and it's really easy for me to tell you what it is so it's like little yeah. sparks fly off and then a little another little section of brush catches fire and then a little yeah. spark flies off and it's very weirdly organic well i don't know how many people i've told now and uh i mean they've all they've all bought they've gone and like bought physical copies or they've you know downloaded and read it on kindle limited and obviously with the, the buddy read on the discord you know that really helped with getting people to read it and pick it up and i know there's you know people joining and reading like you know today and stuff so yeah it's interesting to see where people come in at it and you know unanimous unanimously everyone's really enjoyed it and there was one question i did want to ask and that was a, this was a question from cd as well um so i know in some of the some of the language you used you know you threw in some curse words i did that that sometimes kind of maybe felt out of place with the softer tone of the book um like did you feel like it was out of place or did you um like why did I you felt all like that? I felt like Viv was a warrior who killed things for a living for yeah. twenty something years, and she probably didn't say darn. No, <laughs> no, that's and I didn't sure. want to go over the top with it. No, it was... um, so it's not it's not really excessive. I think I no. want to say she drops two f bombs, and one she of does, them yeah. is for comedy, and the other one is like the worst point in the book. Yes, yeah, um, and that feels like the kind of ways that she would use profanity. She would yeah. use it for a uh, like a 
like kind of a rough disarming joke or she would yeah. use it at the worst. Um, well, and there was some, you know, some more minor cursing, but it felt more like that's the way that I would say it. Yeah. <laughs> so, I, that was one of the questions too. Is like, did you think about maybe making like, or, you know, creating swear words that would be like natural to this world? Or did you want something like getting Joe's that people could relate to that people knew? I wanted immediately to be relatable in the yeah. same way that I didn't cough, call the coffee something weird, you yeah. know, I, I, I could have. I could have yeah. called it calf or something. I used to see well, that in like, like fantasy all the time. There's yeah, some yeah. like, it's like coffee, but it's not quite. Wink, no, wink, nod, yeah. nod. I was like, no, it's just coffee. It's coffee. I just didn't yeah. want any barrier between you and immediately relating to the characters. Yeah. Every time I have to learn some second language to figure out what the heck is going on, I get a little crabby. When I was younger, I was like, ooh, there's a glossary in the back. And I'm like, God damn it, there's a glossary in the back. Yeah. Well, and glossaries in the back, like they're useless for A, for audiobooks. And exactly. they're useless for even like you know ebooks, like because you gotta like you, know, you just can't say, reference this stuff. Yeah, like it's uh, like uh, like a, a perfect example is I I, re I listened to John Gwynn's book uh, The Shadow of the Gods, and it's like a Norse setting, and he's pronouncing all the, like the audio the narrator I, I felt bad for him because he must he was pronouncing all these words. And I'm like I have no idea how this is spelled or how this is like, <laughs> I I can't look this up and like you know without a glossary in front of me it's it's a pain, but. Yeah, no, I, I do appreciate, like, like the, the swear words did stand out to me, but they didn't, like, pull me out of the story. And I know um, I know when I, I said it to my mother-in-law the other day, she's like, oh, I didn't notice the swear words at all. So some people catch it and some people don't. So yeah. It just, and, they're not, and they're not constant. It's not like, it's not no. like a Quentin Tarantino movie. It's just they're, <laughs> no. they were put somewhere for specific effect. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I didn't want them to be in all the dialogue, but yeah. I also wanted it. I don't know. I, I feel like they talk in a fairly modern way. And, yeah. People and swear, right? <laughs> so. People people swear sometimes. Um, and it just felt true to who they were to me. Um, well, it, I, like, I'll say, like, for instance, the main character in the next book would not swear. Yeah, okay. She just would not. It's just not part of her character. Yeah, yeah. So it's not like I just feel that swears need to be represented in the book. It was just this character would swear and this is why would she do it just largely because of her background yeah well and that was like the thing with viv too right you know the the whole thing in the book where she's struggling not to switch back to that mode right and it, yeah. it did feel like when she used that language that was her allowing herself to slip back without fully you know going back into that mode which was i mean and it was even very explicit about that in that yeah. scene the one where she says it in anger it's like yeah. it was very explicit what was happening yeah, yeah. and the other one was purely just because she was just trying to to take a moment and turn it into something else mm -hmm. and it was an unexpected way that she would think of to do it mm -hmm. um so it just felt like viv eh. yeah no i mean I, it worked for me i wasn't too like off put by it but uh i know it was one it was one of the things that yeah. did stand out for, to some of the readers but we're for all some different. people that's a real deal breaker that's not okay and i can oh. respect that i can respect yeah. that but yeah. at the end of the day it was what felt like the true thing to do for me. And mm -hmm. again, when I'm writing this also, I'm, I'm not, I wasn't thinking at all about, oh man, who, who would, who would, <laughs> yeah. I cut off so many people. I mean, I was, I was going to be amazed if anybody read it at all. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> I hear you. No, it's, 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 it's still like really, again, like impressive that you wrote all this in one month. So like after that month was done, like how did the book evolve from there? So. Um, after I finished, I was like, well, I want to publish this. And the reason yeah. I want to publish it is because I want to know how the publishing process works. Because I work mm -hmm. with authors all the time, and yeah. a lot of them go through KDP, but it was all kind of a black box to me. Yeah. And I was like, well, I might as well learn how it all works, yeah. you know? Um, so I, but I, but I figured I'll just do this professionally. I'll do this the way that I would expect it needs to be done. So mm -hmm. I started getting the uh, cover art processed and in process. And I have a friend who's also an author who also has a degree in like copy editing and editing. And she okay. offered to edit the book in barter for an audio book. Um, and I was like, sure, that'd be great. Cause otherwise I was just going to go find an editor and hire them. Yeah. 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 I, I was going to do it one way or another. Um, and we did, uh, I mean, it took, it took a couple months to do the edit because we did it very slowly. Mm. She probably took a month and a half. We didn't start for several weeks because she had other stuff to do. Yeah. And we would do about a chapter or two a day. Mm. Um, and very thorough. Um, yeah. and so it was a great way for me to learn a lot about the editing mm. process and all, all kinds of things I did not know before. 
Do you think that'll um, influence about, your outlining for the next book then? Um, it definitely influenced, hopefully it influences how I will write for the next one. Um, mm -hmm. Structurally, the book didn't really change. Yeah. Uh, a couple of scenes got added, really minor scenes, which okay. if you had read the book before and after, you wouldn't notice. It was almost all subtleties of language and punctuation and mm -hmm. um, making, uh, so in some cases, continuity, mm -hmm. um, all things that I think made the book better, um, but like thousands of tiny edits, but you, yeah. you know, um, removing redundancies. We probably pulled about 2000 words out okay, and put about 2000 words back. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So it was roughly the same length. It's like a net zero. Um, but what would happen is I, uh, I would then start editing ahead. So I would try and remove edits and ahead by internalizing what we had done on the past chapter. And I thought that was a cool way to learn. Mm. So I, I like to learn stuff. Yeah. So that's the way we did it. And and so the number of edits per chapter started to comp you know contract as we got further into mm. the book. And ideally that pays off in the next book too. I mean, I'll still yeah. make all kinds of mistakes, but. Well, I mean, like it's a journey of a thousand steps, right? Yeah. Um. But it was it was a it was a good process, and I, I and I liked it. You know, I learned a lot. There's a, there's always a sh there's a shock like when you first do editing. Mm -hmm. He's like, oh, I'm done, and like, oh wait, no, there's all kinds of things to do. What? <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, no. Um, and I still quibble over like commas because um, I think like a narrator when I punctuate. So I put pauses where I would hear them and say them, which is not the uh, same as actual grammatical rules for punctuation. That's so, right. Yeah. And you can, I mean, you can do whatever you want, but also mm -hmm. I, I, you know, I'd fight for the ones that I thought were really important and then I'd let the other ones go. I got you. Yeah. No, like that, that's such a fascinating process. Cause like, I, I mean, I have no aspirations to write a book cause I feel like I would just, you know, not like blatantly copy, but like, you know, I've, I've read so many books and genres that, you know, I would just be pulling, I don't know what I would pull from and. Uh, oh, I, but you should do it. What do you think this is? Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I, I mean, everything is just like a, it's just like a big mulch pile, right? All the stuff you ever consume and do and mm -hmm. understand goes into your little mulch pile, and whatever you make is going to be influenced by those things. But it'll probably be yours. Yeah, that's a good point. I mean, I used to work with a, an author, like just like a, like a self published author when I when I sold beer early years ago, and he always used to tell me, you know, everything, anything that you ever want to write has already been written. It's just your spin on it, right? And uh, yeah, that's, yeah, I, I totally agree. So I do, I got some more questions here because I, I got some really good questions from everyone here. So what are your favorite types of books to narrate? Because I know you've, you've, you've got done like sci-fi, romance, like romance, mm -hmm. comedy, fantasy, paranormal. What is your favorite? Thing with really good dialogue and a lot of heart. Mm. So I like, like I said I earlier, I really like character-driven stuff. So if it's about yeah. people that I can relate to, um, that has something at once on its mind. It doesn't mm. have to be a crazy thing on its mind, but something on its mind that then also tells me a cool story that yeah. kind of works in conjunction with that. That's what mm. I like. Um, so, and I get a, a reasonable amount of that, but mm. that's, that's what I like. I like a lean, well-told story with really good characters and really good dialogue yeah. that cares about its characters. <laughs> I was going to ask, like, how do you approach internal monologue when you're doing narration? There's a there's a difference to how you project it. It's almost like whispering, but it's more like that sotto voce speaking to yourself mm. kind of thing. Yes, yeah. And you can play the mic. So as you turn away from the mic or to the mic, you get a different presence effect. Yeah. And so you can make those a little more distinct and pry them apart, especially when they're proximate to one another. There's just something in the delivery. It gets a little bit more monotone. It's a little less dynamic. Mm -hmm. there's, there's a couple little things you do. This, that's where the art meets the, uh, you know, <laughs> the work, yeah. I guess. Like, that's the real. I was going to ask, too, since, you know, you have a video game background, too. Like, what is your like, favorite type of game or favorite game or, like, your favorite game you're playing right now, if you are playing any? Um, I'm picking very slowly at Elden Ring. Yeah. Very slowly. Yeah. I just don't have enough time. It's too big. Yeah. I don't have enough time to devote to, like, to, like, go to the, go that far into it. Um, yeah. I'm anxiously awaiting Breath of the Wild 2 anytime now. Thank you. Yeah, that'd be um, nice. I played a little uh, Horizon Forbidden West, which I liked, okay. but unfortunately it came out at the same time as Elden Ring. And that's not very convenient. Yeah. Um, uh, what else? I mean, I, 
I don't finish a lot of games. Yeah, I'm the same. I play them for a few hours and then I'm kind of done. Yeah. Um, except for Breath of the Wild. I put it, I sank a lot of time into Breath of the Wild. I think most people did. <laughs> that was one it's of those a good games. Zen game, right? I mean, for you sure. can just play it and I'm just going to be in a little Studio Ghibli movie here for a while and it's going to be really nice or I'm going to go accomplish some stuff. That's fine. Yeah, me and my son have been playing a lot of um, like Valheim right now. It's kind of like Vikings meets Minecraft. That's pretty fun. Yeah. Yep. But it's, I just like more like, I don't want to go kill stuff. I want to just go like build a little log house or <laughs> <laughs> like, I maybe I'm just at that age stage of my life where I'm like, yeah, I'm done fighting stuff. I just want to like, <laughs> man, like have a little slice of life. I'll make a cozy house and uh, have a, yeah. you know, have a nice comfy chair here or something like that. So no, that's, that's really great. Like, uh, again, like, I just want to again, thank you for, you know, sitting down with me. Um, like, Travis. Oh yeah, this is fun. Like, yeah, this is so much fun. Like, you know, again, like this book is, I, I do have my review actually coming out for it on the 21st. Um, this obviously will come out after, but um, yeah, it's, just, it's such an enjoyable book and I'm so glad that you wrote it and so glad that I got to read it and that other people have got to enjoy it through my channel. And I, I just, I, the only one thing I would wish is that my audience is bigger that I could, you know, scream this book from the mountaintop. Cause like I said, it's, it's probably my favorite book of the year so far. I I, uh, I can actually see myself rereading the, this book this year, and I'm not big into rereads just because they can typically hurt you in a, in a, in a booktube channel. But this is definitely a book that I could pick it up and smash it out in a day, and I know uh, I, I know I would I would <laughs> I, I know I'm going to. It's it's going to happen. I'm I just so want to like it's very heartwarming that you liked it. It's there's something really nice about right I. I needed something nice mm. that felt good. And it's really weirdly rewarding to put something out that if other people tell you they felt good after yeah. reading it, it's really, I don't know. It's really affecting. <laughs> well, I think the world needed it. Like after these last two years, they just needed something that was cozy and, you know, held them and, you know, made them like, so Discworld is that, that type of series for me. And this, this hit me like a Discworld book where, um where i just felt like i dropped into this world for the a brief amount of time got to know these characters and i walked away loving the characters loving the setting and just wanting you know just wanting more and i think that's you couldn't ask any more from an author uh, you know one thing i guess i really liked about terry pratchett is that, like he was very optimistic about people mm -hmm. and it comes through in everything the worst characters in the book or yeah. the most, you know, unlikable are still somehow likable. He's somehow yeah. optimistic about all of his characters and well, his world. He never punched down too, right? And that's no. like where I felt like in your book, like you don't punch down at anyone, like you punch, you punch up in a sense. And but then when you realize like the the people who are maybe in power are pulling the strings, they they're just people too. And uh, you know, you see that obviously with um, a certain a certain group yeah. of people in the, in the book. So. <laughs> um yeah i just i liked i like that breakdown you did there too i i did want to um to ask one last question from cd and uh she she wants to know you know how do you like your coffee how do you take your coffee and or is it is it cut like hot coffee you know latte iced i drink it a couple different ways but okay. usually i have a uh i have what's i think it's called a um a mezzo mezzo okay which is a little bit of brown sugar and you put it in the bottom and yep. then it has basically an americano and and yep. and uh an espresso and a little bit of steamed milk okay and so it's it's a two shotter that has a little yeah. water to make it a little taller a little like that, that sweetness from the brown sugar or not brown sugar uh the the granulated brown sugar the kind of crystallized stuff like turbinado yeah, sugar, steamed right? milk. yeah yeah and uh that's that's kind of like my my favorite. But if I'm going somewhere, I'll get like, um, I'll either get just a straight espresso or I'll get uh, an mm -hmm. americano with a little cream and a little vanilla or something. I like my coffee yeah. lots of different ways. But yeah, yeah, that first one that's my that's my a number one morning yeah. coffee, the one I spend it, yeah. time on. Nice, very nice. I'm I'm usually a, a flat white guy. I like I don't mind mm -hmm. the the old flat white, but uh, I'm I'm very like. Cause, you know that we get lot we can get lattes at Tim Hortons, but they aren't good. Like I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna get some heat for that. I'm for sure gonna get some heat for that. But <laughs> like I'm just a simple coffee with cream type of guy. So 
no I, again like thank you so much this is so much fun and I, I i wish you like all the success in the world with your with your book and you know with your your subsequent books that are going to come out and obviously um you you become a quick instant buy author for me so again just thank you so much and uh thank you thank I you really, I really appreciate this I, opportunity this is really just a I, this is just a real, such a pleasant interview it was so nice to talk to you oh thank you so much <laughs> i didn't want to ask you because like i said i've watched a few of your interviews now too and um i didn't want to ask you the same typical type of questions where people are just like well tell me about you and uh like a, I thought, you know, throw a little bit more. It's always uh, fun and interesting if you just end up you're talking about things that are just not, not the same, not the same old thing. It's yeah, all kinds of interesting stuff comes out. Well, it's nice to just have a conversation too, and uh, yeah. you know, see where it leads because uh, you know, you know, some sometimes author interviews can be like very formulaic, and I, I, I don't want them to be like a thing. Of, you know, people people want to know you, and that's like, you know for a lot of success from the, like other authors, like with like, you know, bigger authors like Brandon Sanderson is like, people know him, people know Brandon Sanderson and it's because he puts himself out there and, you know, you, the only way to get out there is talking about yourself. Just like talk to people. Yeah. Fortunately, my is. job is talking all day. This is very <laughs> handy. Yeah. yeah, no kidding. Yeah. Like uh, you've got a perfect setup there just to, just to get going. And like, uh, do you have anything else lined up that you're going to be talking with like this week or um, um, maybe plug them a bit? I don't know. It's all, everything is on my Google calendar. I just get mm. little alerts and it's the only way I survive. Yeah, it's just yeah. little alerts popping up saying, don't forget what you're doing this week. Um, my, my calendar looks like somebody melted Skittles and smeared them all over it. Like every <laughs> oh, no. day has some color smeared across it. It's just an absolute disaster. Was that how you, you must book yourself in for like, uh, like this is my, uh, this is my audible time like where I'm recording, like my recording time. And then this, did to. you, do you record, do you, do you book breaks into your into your calendar? Theoretically, okay, unfortunately, yeah. most of them this year evaporated. Um, yeah. It was a complicated year because so, like eighty percent of the books on my schedule haven't been written. So, oh, okay. if they miss dates, you move things. You try and mm. do air traffic control and move things around. But not all books are the same length. So yeah. this is actually a really weird and complicated science that I am just learning to get a hold of. And wow. uh, I'm, it's slightly unique situation. So um, you, you, sometimes you bite off more than you can chew. Sometimes you put too many things on there. You try and move too many, or you try yeah. and accommodate people too much. And, you know, it's, it gets get burned a bit, you know, but I, I will, I will finish digging my way out. <laughs> <laughs> well has it changed do you think like from like 2017 to where you are now like you're um like certainly for me it has yeah because, you know work, um, but... as far as just my my workload has increased and my schedule has continued mm -hmm. to extend um i don't think audiobook narration certainly took any hits during covid i think a lot of it has been like oh wow everybody's stuck at home yeah let's just listen to a lot of audiobooks yeah, um, yeah. so i think audiobooks themselves have taken off and been crazy and it's been a good time to be a narrator also yeah. you work at home you're not going to go yeah. get covid so no, you don't have to true. worry about not going into your office or anything else especially if you don't want to get covid because then you no. can't work <laughs> that's right well yeah you, know, you don't want to lose your voice yeah like i felt i listened to a lot less audiobooks um because of covid because like i used to i used to go to the you wouldn't know i used to go to the gym a lot. i used to go to the gym like four times a week and that was the way main way i used to consume audiobooks you know yeah an hour an hour setting you know you work out you yep. listen to an audiobook for an hour and now that that outlet's gone and nobody, nobody wants to work out from home working out from home sucks right so like, like uh so i felt like my I, I i got a dog this last year so that's how i've been consuming audiobooks is you know walk the walk the, the dog, dog. yeah yep poor dog because now the dog's freezing when we're going for a walk she's like take me home and i'm like no one more chapter <laughs> so, uh, that's so funny again well i guess i'll, I'll probably I'll, I'll, I'll let you go here travis but again just thank you so much and um you know i i'd love to have you on again in the future once your love next to. book comes out or even you know if we just want to chat and uh you know shoot the breeze yeah, absolutely because it's been love it's to. been a lot of fun so anyways we'll wrap it up here guys so if you haven't read legends and lattes Get the book. You can get it on Kindle Unlimited. You can. I would recommend buying a physical copy because it's absolutely gorgeous. Um, the the buddy read still going on. Even if you're not reading it in April, like and you're reading in May or whenever, join my join my Discord. I'd love to talk to you about uh, Legends and Latte. So again, thank you, Travis. And um, yeah, guys, we'll see you next time. Cheers. Thanks, everybody.